and doing obviously things on each other and telling each other what you did really well and what you did to get yourselves absolutely perfect for you know your Oski, uh, whatever it is. When is your Oski, by the way? Okay, so you know, you've got loads of time. It's fine. You need like a month to smash that Oski. Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay, so just a little introduction about who we are. My name is Pips Tomkinson, if you don't know me already. I currently work in St. James's Hospital in general medicine. I'm currently on neurology, and then I go on to upper GI surgery. And my F2 job is in Uddersfield. Uh, I'm Liz. Uh, I've lectured a couple of times at you before. Um, and I did acute med with gen med, and then colorectal, which I'm on at the moment, which is really good if anyone is going to do that um, in these. And then psychiatry in the summer. So, <laughs> I thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. So just a little bit about ourselves, you know, what we aspire to be. Um, I've got an interest in sports medicine. I'm currently in the dilemma of whether I want to go down the medicine route or the surgical route to just do orthopaedics with sports surgery. And Liz wants to do orthogarni. She's currently doing sure some taste today. So, yeah. So you know, that's what we've been thinking about. But anyway, on to you guys. So this is what we're going to be doing today. Not much, no, some things. Uh, so just obviously we've done the introduction, we're going to go through three <coughs> different OSCE scenarios, okay? And we want it to be as interactive as possible. We need to have a pen and paper out as well, please. And then we'll just, you know, go over a few things at the end and any questions, obviously. Right, so this is our acting station. We did make two excellent videos last night um, with, a, with another person involved, but unfortunately, due to the technology, it has failed us. So instead, you're going to view our excellent acting skills. So, right, um, this will now be Mrs. Spence. I'm not Mr., even though the nurses do think I have a male voice. Um, <laughs> that's, another, that's another story. They asked for the female F1. I was like, I am the female F1. I am the female F1. <laughs> <laughs> Bad moment at 2 a.m. <laughs> oh, anyway. So anyway, um, I've had a nasty case of pyelonephritis, and um, I've needed some gentamicin for this. And this was, I came in overnight, and the night team prescribed me the wrong dose of gentamicin. They calculated my weight to some with weight, and they did it wrong. They thought I was faster than I actually was. So um, I don't know about this yet. So Liz here is going to be the F1 Doxford hook. And she's going to come and tell me. So, do you, where, do you, do you want to pop on that bench? Do you want to make Antibiotic will help kill more bugs, yeah? Uh, it doesn't really work like that, but you don't have a scientific mind, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, actually, I used, okay. to be a, I used to be a microbiologist, oh. literally. It's not in science, is it? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so are you uh, saying it's a bad thing? I'm saying, well, I'm saying it's, it is a good thing, obviously, it will kill the bugs that we're trying to treat, but at the same time, um, it can actually cause some damage to your kidneys. So, oh. that's, why, that's why we're changing it to the normal. So, are you, are you worried about my kidneys then? Well, we're doing a few tests on them to check that we haven't damaged them, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Well, doctor, um, whoever you are, uh, my mother died from kidney failure. Oh, goodness. Oh, so, I'm a bit worried. Yeah. Well, don't be worried. We've got it all under control. Don't worry yourself. <laughs> okay, well, you have to understand I am a bit worried, and I think this is a, it's a big mistake. Does this often happen in this trust? Uh, I couldn't really say, I've not looked at the statistics. But I mean, who actually made before. this mistake? It was uh, one of the doctors on the night team, I don't know, some, some joker. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm not very happy with this at all. Mm, I can see that you're quite angry, but as I say, it wasn't me who did it, was it? I'm just making it better. Well, I'd like to talk to you about this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to do that, love, I'm talking to you now. Well, um, actually, I would like to make a complaint, I'm not very happy with what's happened. Mm, okay, best speak to the nurses about that. I don't really deal with complaints. <laughs> okay, well, I'll speak to the nurses about it, and I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm pretty annoyed. Okay, right, well, I'll just go sort this out, shall I? Right, so that is obviously an example of how not to do it in your or in real life. 
And as you can see, Mrs. Spence was getting quite upset the fact that I was just batting her away at questions. All right, so now we'll do it like properly. Okie dokie. Right. Hello, Mrs. Spence. Hi there, my name's Liz. I'm one of the F1s. How are you doing? Oh, I'm okay. I'm feeling a lot better than I was last night. Oh, I was in such agony, but I feeling know. better. Well, we're treating you for the kidney infection now, aren't we? Yes, yes, so that's, that's doing a lot horrible. Um, I've actually, I've not just come here for a social visit, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I've come here because I need to tell you about something that, was, like a mistake that was made with your treatment last night. Oh no. Yeah, I'm never so sorry to tell you this, but actually the night team, when they calculated your dose of the gentamartin that we're giving you, which is the antibiotic that goes through the vein in the arm, mm -hmm. um, they actually prescribed you a little bit too much of that, according to your body weight. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, well, is that not a good thing? Like, well, you know? yeah, you might think that it's actually a good thing because it would kill the bone, <coughs> okay, but actually, we need to be. It needs to be within certain parameters for it to be effective. And if it's a little bit too high, sometimes it can cause damage to your kidneys and things like that. Ooh. Okay. Um. It's a bit worrying. Yeah, it is a little bit worrying. That's why we've kind of picked it up straight away and we're going to be changing it. And I just wanted okay. to talk through it with you as well. Because it can damage the kidneys, what we're going to be doing is just checking your bloods every 12 hours to monitor the kidney function. And if it does go off, so you know, it does show signs of failure or yeah. anything like that, then we'll be treating you instantly. Okay. okay. All right, well, as long as we're sort of keeping an eye on things, I think I'm happy with that. Yeah. Again, I'm very sorry about the mistake. I mean, would you like to, uh, would you like to talk to anyone else about it at all? Well, I'm just a bit concerned. I mean, the fact that it can cause kidney damage. I mean, is there any anyone I can sort of talk to about this if I'm not very happy about the way yeah, this has happened? absolutely. You can bring it up with the nursing staff. Mm -hmm. There's also a, a service called PALS, that patient advice and liaison service. Oh, you okay. To, if you want to maybe take it further and make a formal call. Oh, I don't know about formal, but I think maybe just have something about the PALS, if that's yeah, all right. that's absolutely fine, yeah. And I'll be running it past all my colleagues as well to make sure it doesn't happen again in our department. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay, yes. good stuff. So, I've told you that, you know, we've put you on this antibiotic. I've told you that we've got the dose a little bit wrong, but we've changed it instantly now. I've told you that it could cause some damage to your kidneys. Mm -hmm. um, and for that, we're going to be checking your blood. And I've told you where you can make a complaint if you wanted to. Is that okay? okay. Do you understand all of what I've told you? Yeah, no, I think you've run through it very okay. well. Thank you very I've much. I've got a little pals leaflet for oh, you. Oh, wow, here. thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> thank you. All right. And uh, I'll come back and see you later this afternoon to see if you've got any more questions. Okay? Oh, that'd be very helpful. Thank you very much. Great. Okay, then, Dr. Dr. Good. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> okay. So good. So did everyone kind of see the difference between the two? I know, okay, this, this, this is our really good video, but so what do you think went well in the bad video? Not oh, much. No. <laughs> um, so what do you think needed improving in the bad one? Yeah, absolutely. So she didn't know who the hell I was, did she? Um, anything else? Actually saying sorry. Yeah, she yeah. didn't apologise at all, did she? Me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so all the things really that you said there. Um, so this is a general structure that we've, we've kind of come up with for any kind of complaint station that you might come across. So always do the introduce yourself, check the ID badge, which I'm going to do, wash your hands and ask them if they want a relative there as well. Obviously I didn't do that in that scenario because it's a bit ad hoc. But um, it's always nice if someone is, um, you know, you want to make a complaint, it's good to have a relative there to discuss through what's going on. Um, so an open introduction to the problem, so like I said, you know, build a bit of rapport, how are you doing, we're treating you for this, we've got some bad news to tell you, I'm really sorry, a bit of a warning shot. Um, so let them vent their anger and validate their feelings, so don't belittle them like I did with the first one, don't just say, oh don't worry, don't worry pet, you know, don't do that, really bad. Um, also non-verbal things, like it was difficult to, to um, show you here, but you know, getting down to the level of the patient at the bedside, you know, if that, mean, if that means like going onto your knees or something, always makes the patient... I don't know if anyone's ever been lying in bed in hospital with someone towering over you before. It's really intimidating. Um, eye contact, you know, a little bit of like arm, like you know, arm contact, like just a reassurance, but not like a pat. It's always quite nice, I think, if you feel like you've got that rapport with the patient. Um, actions are really good ones. So you've made this mistake, but what are you going to do about it? Like I said, you know, we're going to check your kidneys because it might cause some problems. We're, you know. You've got to make sure that this is brought up in the department so nobody makes this mistake again. You know, real positive points that the patient can be like, oh, you know, what I suffered isn't going to happen again to any other patient. And they might feel like they're involved in that change as well, which is quite nice. Um, 
complaints procedure, so I mentioned panels there, so that's one thing you can bring up if there is a complaints um, thing going on. I'm not sure if anyone's going to any other trusts, if there's something similar, but it'd be quite good to find out. And they've always got panels and leaflets and often around the walls. <coughs> um, also, if they do make a complaint, it's quite good to say that they, you know, their care won't be affected. So, you know, just because they make a complaint, the consultant you know, will still see them and will still treat them as if they have made a complaint. And then SCALF. Has everyone heard of SCALF? So that's you summarise, you check understanding, ask any questions, leave further the follow-up. So I think I did most of those things at the end of that consultation, didn't I? And then the follow-up for that was just, I'll come back and see this afternoon and see how you're doing. You know, even if it's just bobbing, you know, head around the curtains, how you doing? You know, you don't need to write in the notes, but it's just quite nice to have that, um, have that relationship with patients. Okay, next. Complaints, very easy. Let them shower you. Let them vent their anger. You just need to be like, sorry. Yeah, and just don't react to it. And if you're in an OSCE station for this, you might be, you know, quite stressed out anyway. And if you show any sign of reacting to it, the passive anger, you just might accidentally let it out. They will take that to town, okay? Yeah. So just keep as calm as possible, okay? You guys have come across simulator patients before, so you know how interesting it can be. Exactly. And obviously this is really important for when you start working. I've we've both had instances when patients have not been happy and I got sent down by my SHO to see a patient and the relatives who'd been waiting for four hours because their poor mother had had some PR bleeding. And Ash said, oh, come on, Pips, you know, do you mind just doing this for me? I was not expecting what happened next. They were pretty angry. But with my calming influence, I managed to resolve the situation. <laughs> and thankfully managed to avoid the, com the complaint. <laughs> Yeah, so Leeds graduate, really good at PPD. There we go. <laughs> right, so, so this, is, this is supposed to be our good video. Uh, but yeah. Good? Okay, so next one Warfarin counselling. I don't think this has been covered in any of your other lectures yet. Anyone tell me if they, you have done it already? No? Okay. It is a potential station. Obviously, it will be in the 12 minute. OSCE counselling stations, and there is quite a lot to cover in Warfarin, okay? It didn't come up last year, so there is a potential for it to come up this year, you never know. So this is your um, situation, so your lovely 62-year-old lady's had a PE whilst in hospital, surgeons have got to provide <coughs> the VT prophylaxis, well done. And so please, you now need to give her a six-month prescription of Warfarin, <coughs> and now please can you counsel her on her Warfarin prescription? So obviously, again, with counselling, I'm not going to lecture you on how to counsel because you had this lecture given to you a couple of weeks ago already, but obviously this is just a little refresh slide that you can read at your own leisure. So um, think about this with your template. And so now what I'd like you to do <coughs> using these, I'm giving you a bit of a head start, okay, I'm being nice. Giving you these headings, I want you to write down on your piece of paper a couple of points for each heading that you would cover in your... Warfarin counselling station. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that and then I want people to start shouting out when I ask them to. Okay? Just two or three for each heading.
everyone got some points written down for each section, or do you need some more time? Let's get on with it, yeah? Okay, right, so we're going to do it row by row. Okay, so first row here. Can you give me some points you would cover or ask this patient about suitability? Have they, what, have they got an um, metallic heart valve or anything like that? Okay. So right. is that what you meant? Like, they're they're falling, like how stable they are on the feet. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's quite good. Both of them, yeah, you know, exactly. If they do have anything else, yeah. The same on their feet, that's a good point. Anything else? Do they have any clotting disorders? Yes, that's a good one, yeah. Are there any other medications? Yes. Yeah. Got allergies? Yep. Did you, is everyone hearing this, by the way? Because we're about to run through it anyway, so don't worry if you can't hear it. Okay, very good. Right, second row. Um, what would you be saying in what is warfarin, what does it do? If you're explaining it to a patient, remember, so don't go all complicated on me. Anyone from the second row, come on. Acts on your blood to make it less sticky and yeah, steady, perfect. to get less hot. Yeah, nice and simple. Thin to your blood, makes it less sticky. That's so, some people open with like, it's rat poison, but <laughs> <laughs> just the rat poison that we use at a very low dose. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure what's actually like. Okay, so third row, what points would you cover in how to take warfarin? Yep. And initially the dose might change, until we get it sort of so you might have to take two or one or whatever. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, and you have to, if you then go to the doctor to get put on any other medication, you have to tell them you're on warfarin because that's going to be attractive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's good. Okay. Don't, don't miss one. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss one, don't take two the next day. But, like, so you know, if you remember at night time, just take, take one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then take one the normal time the next day. Okay, so next row, um, where are we up to? The side effects of warfarin. Next row, someone please. Bleeding. Yes? Bruising. Yep. yep. Two girls on the end over there, anything to say? The side effects of warfarin? Yep, yeah, very good. Okay, anything else here from you three girls? Side effects? Well, it's to do with interactions, but alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of coming into section five, but uh, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, moving on to section five. Tim, give us something. Uh, yeah, so we started on any new drugs. Make sure you mention it. Yep, very good. Alcohol. Yep, okay. Give someone else a turn on the on your same row. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, someone from this end of the row. Any any other precautions you can advise this person of? The bracelet or very good, yeah. It's so they should be careful about pregnancy. Very good, very good point. Okay, anyone on the end of the row? Anything else to add to precautions? We've had... There's one other thing I can think of. <coughs> Sorry? Juice. Yeah, yeah, grapefruit juice and something, some other kind of food as well, which we'll cover. Right, okay, so top... Oh, well, we've already... That's yeah, it. Stop. That's already you guys are lucky, I'm catching you up next. What is the blood test? What's the sample? What colour bottle does it go in? Blue. There we go. What's all blue? What's blue? Right, okay. So, um, okay, so we're just going to go through each section, you know, just part part on through basically. So suitability, you guys, you've got most of the points there. So um, thinking about the question that did come up back there was that are you pregnant? You know, because obviously the Tristogenic, especially in the first trimester, um, in recent operations, strokes, stomach ulcers, again, sort of tying in with bleeding risk, basically, and what other medication are you on. But you know, you've got a good load of things there, and you added some things onto it as well. So, next one. So, obviously, as you summarise it very, very well, you know, thins the blood, less likely to clot, need to prevent further clots, especially in this lady with the PE. Yeah, it's good to say that warfarin doesn't actually break down the clot in the lung anyway, it just stops it from getting bigger and your body actually breaks down the clot itself. So that's something that people get a bit confused about, they think that warfarin actually breaks down the clot. We were saying a little line about INR, like the fact that INR is one. Yeah. 
That was good, yeah. So, how I explain it to patients is uh, everyone, I don't know whether you've done this when, in your little groups, like your OSCE groups, but I, I pick up things from other people, and if someone says something in quite a nice way, I always pick up on that. And one thing I picked up from someone is explaining about the INR. So, you know, you explain to the patient, but like, you know, we check your blood for the INR, we want it be, to be between two and three for AF, for example. Or, uh, yeah, and so that means that your blood in comparison to a normal person working on the street will be two times as runny. So it'll be, it'll be, it'll, instead of taking one second to clot, it'll take two to three seconds to clot. So that's quite a good way of explaining the I and R to them instead of being like international normalized ratio, etc. Okay, okay. So next one, obviously we covered this already, but it's take same dose every day, try and encourage you to take it at the same time every day, so obviously in hospital we circle 6pm, and then if they miss a dose, very, very important not to double dose, and they need to tell their GP straight away, and tell them never to stop their warfarin suddenly, so if they start to have nausea and vomiting, and they're not taking their tablets, or they think the tablets are coming back up, they need to seek medical advice as well, okay? So obviously we covered some side effects, and yes, you've got obviously the obvious one, which is bleeding. But also, apparently, you can get nausea, vomiting, jaundice, and some skin rashes. But obviously, bleeding is the main one. I've never seen. No. No. One thing that I always tell people is, when it comes to bleeding and warning them about warfarin side effects, is that you know, if you ever have a fall and you notice bruising that you know that is much bigger than you would expect it, then go to hospital. If you have a fall and hit your head, then go to A and E immediately. That's one thing. So obviously it's a closed box, isn't it? So you don't want people bleeding into their brains. And we've had a few um, episodes. We've, we've, we've both had bad experiences with patients on, on warfarin who have fallen on the ward, and then next day the nurses go to wake them up and they're like GCS three or four. So you know, and it wasn't us, obviously. You know, I'm not going to blame it on someone else, but it was the team. The team. The team. <laughs> uh, who let it happen? They weren't reviewed properly. They did do the post falls assessment properly. Obviously, it can be missed because they might not have any trauma to the head, or they might not be able to tell you. But it was missed, and that patient got transferred to a ward the next day, and then the next day their GCS was boom down, CT, blood. So not good. Not good. So yeah, if you've got if you've got a high index of suspicion, of, you know, for example, say you get called to the ward and get to do a falls assessment on someone, which you have asked to do all the time as an F1. Um, if they're on warfarin, make sure they're on neuro obs, you know, half hourly or hourly, because you know it might it might annoy the patient being woken up through the night half hourly or hourly, but at least then you know exactly what they're doing in terms of their GCS. Yeah. Okay. Chapter, chapter, chapter. So precautions, um, obviously someone commented about alcohol intake. The diet, someone mentioned about grapefruit juice, there's also another part to the diet which you need to be careful about, which is curly leafy vegetables, such as curly kale and um, broccoli and cabbage. But um, you know, they, these are vegetables which uh, spring onions, yeah, spring, spring, spring greens, greens spring greens. greens. Do you eat a lot of spring greens, Toby? <laughs> so, because um, they contain vitamin K, so obviously interaction there. So, grapefruit juice and green leafy vegetables. Um, trauma, we've talked about alcohol in intake, you know, not so <coughs> excessive alcohol intake. And also drug interactions. Now, can anyone think of a specific drug which often you can see a GP who's prescribed this drug, they're on warfarin, and they come in because their INR is sky high. Anyone? Yeah, which antibiotic? Erythromycin. 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 So it's erythromycin. It's both one. I saw it in MAU and I was like, stupid GP. Um, <laughs> and we win. <laughs> Great, there's little things. So, uh, yeah, and also the other thing about trauma is tell them not to play contact sports, as many 62-year-old ladies do. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't believe that when I saw that. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Okay, right, so this is the last station. So we're nearly, nearly home time. Um, so we thought we'd do a management station amongst all that light chatting that we've done recently. So, this is the scenario. You're the F1 covering the surgical unit at night. This was me last week. The F Mr. L came in with an acute GI bleed. The initial, the initial management for this has been done by your reg and that he's now completely stable. And you chase his blood, like the diligent F1 that you are, and you notice the following. Da, da, da. So, um, obviously yeah. these were his bloods when he came in, and these are his bloods that are now. So can someone tell me what is going on? Oh, no, yeah, someone tell me what's going on here. 
AKI, exactly. Okay, and any reason why his urea might be high on admission? Bleeding. Yeah, yeah, just making smash. sure you've got it, you know. Well done, guys. Really good. Um, okay, so. What do you do? <laughs> Can I really take a minute to look how good this picture is? <laughs> it's fun, though. You literally made my night. <laughs> so um, okay, so. The F1, you've seen that result, you need to act on it. What are you going to do? Test the patient. Yes, okay. A, B, C, D, etc. Yeah, okay. Check the blood test. So, it's pre renal, renal, post renal. Yeah, so what's everyone think it is? Pre renal, renal, post renal? Pre renal. Yeah, why? Yeah, I mean, hypertension. So, yeah. Well done, very good. Uh, okay, so it's hypo perfusion of the kidneys. What do you need to do to correct that? Louis, Louis. Yeah. 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 So how much would you give them? What would you give? One litre. Of yeah. 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 yeah, perfect. Yeah. So that's the treatment for an AKI. Even if they're a bit old and crumbly, you'd probably still give it. Maybe, Maybe five hundred. Maybe five hundred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we uh, we had like a, a lecture from a renal person at the beginning of F1, and they were like, just give a litre of saline to start for anyone with an AKI. Someone might have met him before, Dr. Mooney. Has anyone ever come across Dr. Mooney? That's his actual name. <laughs> <laughs> he gives a great renal uh, lecture. Anyway, so yeah, we've said fluid, just smash it through, and hopefully that will clear everything. So on to the next bit. So what else do you need to think about? This is what the station is about. This is his drug chart. A classic one that you'll all be writing out all night long on MAU yeah. nights. So what you see, doing. he's a bit of a vascular path, so he's on all the uh, blood pressure medication and aspirin and stuff. So should we go through one by one whether people think we should stop, continue, or um, withhold for a bit and then restart after the AKIs? Uh, we'll just do okay. joint, joint shouting out. Joint yeah. shouting nice and loud. So come on, tell me, Lasartan, what are you going? What, what is it, and what are you going to do with it? A R B. Yeah, just check it. Yeah, right. Stop. You got stop. Hold. Hold. Just hold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you, do you know? Does everyone know how to do that on a drug chart? No. Don't cross. Don't cross. That's it's confusing for the nurses. Put sixes. Six in the box means uh, admit at doctor's. Discretion. Order or discretion, yeah, one of the two. So how long do you do? Do you buy six? I'd probably do it for about four days, and then you'd be checking the blood like twice a day, probably if they've got an AKI, and as soon as it's improved, then you can put them back on it, because you're treating the cause, aren't you? Mm. You, know, you know this isn't a, a kidney problem. This is just him being hyper, like, hyper confusing his kidneys. So I think four days is pretty much. How do you, how do you write on the drug chart? So... It's a big sick. In a square. In a square. In a square. In a square. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so try not to cross it, that's what we're saying. So then everyone's like, ugh, what do words cross the door? Yeah, like, and they just keep on crossing it. <laughs> if you cross it, the nurse at like 2 o'clock in the morning will be like, Doctor, this person's crossed it out, what does that mean? And you're like, I don't know. I don't know what the person's door with Doctor. So if you put a six, then you, they kind of have an idea why. And then if you do a six, then on the other side of the drug chart, there's a little, all those lines on the back are to say why you've omitted it. So you can be like, due to AKI, restart in four days, something like that. And it just gives real clear instructions to the nurses who are sometimes a bit panicky when it comes to this uh, sort of stuff. Is it, are uh, ARPs bad like ACE and it does Yeah. Yeah. Right, aspirin. Some boxing and hip Is anyone going to do anything with aspirin? No, no. There's actually two schools of thought, really. I think I'd keep it. Some people would stop it. I would like, hold it. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I, I think the evidence is mixed, really, in terms of how much it causes an AKI. No, no, but we're talking about bleeding. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, God, yeah. That's the point. I t- said this to her last night. She was like, no, I wouldn't stop it. I was like, no, you just had a massive GI bleed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so did everyone yeah, hear that? You would hold <laughs> it, okay, because he's just had a GI bleed and you do not want him to bleed again, okay? So, moving on, clopidogrel. Oh, yeah, yeah hold, hold, six. Okay, bisoprolol, what would you do? What's his blood pressure? Great question. She's on it. Um, so, yeah, you need to review the blood pressure, basically. But obviously, you're not thinking about AKI or bleeding, you're just looking at the blood pressure. <coughs> so again, you can just six it for a couple of days if he's a bit hypotensive. <coughs> okay, moving on, metformin. Oh, oh, stop, so great, unanimous stop, fantastic. With the ones we're stopping here, like the aspirin, mm. the blood, the sixing, how many, for the aspirin, for 
I'd do it until you knew that he was stable and that his HB was in a decent range, so above 10, probably. Okay. But, yeah. And also, you know, you don't often have to make these decisions. Um, you know, yeah. it's going to be your seniors. Ask on the ward round. Ask on the ward round. You know, how long do you thought that's been called? Yeah. Okay, right, glitter side. Yeah, we thought we just because we thought it was fine. Then we looked on online the and uh, in the BNF, yeah, it, sh it said that it wasn't very good with AKI, was it? But they said you could just reduce the dose. So just if you just half those two doses, apparently that's all right. You know, just obviously keep an eye on the CBDs as well and tailoring to that. Okay. Um, Capillary, MS capillary blo glucose. Sorry. Obviously, that's that's what CBD. Okay, MST. Swap it for another. Ooh, discuss. Stop it because it's really excreted. Okay, so we're just only down here. Sorry, she's not shouting loud enough. Okay. Um, so boys are shouting there. So she is saying, let's ch think about changing it to a different opiate. Yeah. Because it is really excreted and it will build up in the system, especially for ABD. So what are you thinking then? Fentanyl. Okay. Yeah. And you probably, with, when it comes to MST and things, you probably just want to get advice from someone. So you want to call the anaesthetics team, or you know, if, you, if it's a palliative patient, call the palliative team, because they're so good with pain control, and they really won't mind you phoning them up and saying help. So yeah, so we thought <coughs> for this, a fent fentanyl or a buprenorphin patch, because they're not excreted. Kids, apparently. Okay, moving but, on. Yeah, ask advice. Paracetamol. Okay. Key, yeah. yeah. Simvastatin. Key, key, yeah. That's yeah. not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Tinsaparin. Oh, Change the clexane. Change the clexane. What dose? But. Do I bleed? Uh, Stop it. Yeah. So yeah, but you would change to if it's e G, yeah, if it's EGFR is less than or something, um, then you change it to clexane, 20 milligrams instead. But but you admit it for a while just because he's had a GI bleed. What's the case It's 40 milligrams normally for anyone who's elderly, but if they've got renal impairment, it's 20 milligrams. Why, why is why is flexing worth it? Uh, I don't really know, but the elderly, like el yeah, el the elderly yeah. consultants think it's better for older people, and the renal physicians think that it's better for people with renal impairment at a lower dose, and that's what's accepted in this trust. I've never read any evidence either way because I I don't care. <laughs> Okay, we're right, moving on. Um, folic acid. Because he's a loser. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's vitamin B co strong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So here is a lovely colourful slide to summarise what we've just talked about. Obviously, the red, ones in red, you'll be sick sick for a couple of days. And the ones in orange, you're either just reviewing or changing. Okay? What if they were more pretty? Oh, completely, absolutely stop the frizz. So you need to actually... You need well, you're, to not, you're not meant to stop it colour. immediately. Just... <laughs> but, no, in an acute situation like this, you stop and you reverse it with vitamin K. Yeah, or Optiflex probably in this chap because he's bleeding. And vitamin, takes, vitamin K takes a while to kick in. Optiflex does it straight away. If it was a non-bleeding case, yeah. is water still necrotoxic? No, is it, I think it's... Right. Not too sure. Yeah, so it was, it was I don't think I would. I don't think I've ever stopped it in anyone. Has anyone else got an opinion about Warfarin and AKI? We think it'd be fine. It is fine, yeah. It's exactly, yeah. What were we saying about Pepsi? What do you want to start No, well, because this person's got an acute GI bleed, we're actually not going to change it. We're just going to stop their the firing completely. But we said, because he, if it was just an AKI case, you'd change it to Pepsi in 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. okay, right. Has anyone got any further questions about this OSCE case we just discussed? No. Great. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, sorry. Oh, wait. Um, what? In the exam, when do you switch them to, like, an octopus or what have you, or is it just a case of crossing oh, no, I think that's. I think that's asking too much in your exam, to be quite honest. Like, because it depends on the guidelines and stuff. I suppose, you know, you could if you were feeling a bit smarmy, but, like, in the, the exam, you're going to be. Possible. You're going to be. Really this is a case that we had in our OSCE, and you sit down and you're panicking, you're like, oh, we've done everything, but actually you just need to calmly think about it, yeah. okay? 
And yeah, definitely use the six mechanism because that's really good instead of just like zipping, you know, crossing them all off. And uh, yeah, and if they do ask you to cross anything off in your asking, make sure you sign it and then just put a little reason by, which is quite nice because it then helps the person who, you know, is then going to do the drum chart next time or do the TTO. The or you get the pharmacist to. coming after you, literally. Right. Right, moving on. Okay, so that is the and end of our lecture. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, we kind of feel like, has anyone got any further questions to that? Or do you feel like, oh, yeah. Can I ask a question about the warfare? Yeah. When you start someone on warfare, yeah. will we ever be asked to explain to them about how it's monitored when they're first on it? So like when they need to yeah, come back to probably, but I mean, them. yeah, I mean, generally what I say is, like, we're going to start you on warfarin, it's something that we need to do regular blood tests on, because, um, and I don't know whether anyone's ever come across this before, but draw, drawing an explanation stations really helps. So what I usually do is I draw a graph, so I'm like, this is time and this is your INR, so we want to get you between these two lines. If it's too, we need to do regular blood tests because if it's too high, then it causes bleeding risks. If it's too low, then it means that you're not actually going to be, we're not going to be doing the thing that we need to do, which is stopping the blood from being so thick. Um, and that's why we need to do regular blood tests. So for the first, maybe say five days, we'll do blood tests every day. And then if it's in hospital, and then what you do then is send them home with an, with a, an appointment to have an INR check again. And then they have it probably maybe every two weeks, depending on if it's stable or not stable. So the thing is, it varies between patient to patient. You can't say yes, you will have blood tests every five, like every day for five days, and then every two weeks and every three months or whatever. So you just need to say it's variable. But it's a really good way, like just any explanation station. If you can draw it on paper, they love that. Um, okay. Any other questions about anything in general, not just the cases that we've covered? Fire all sorts of stuff out as if you like. Yeah. Whether concerns, worries, ideas, concerns, etc. Right, okay, so we'll just give you some advice then. Stuff that we thought was really useful that people in old years told us. So, so as, yeah, go on then. Question, was that? No. Sorry, I'm hearing things. Weird. As Douglas Allen says, don't panic, it's all fine. Deep breath. You know the, you need to know the emergency conditions like the back of your hand. So you know your anaphylaxis stuff. Just just learn it. Just sit down, read through the Oxford handbook thing. You need to know it. Don't wear a short skirt or a low top. Standard. Just look professional. Just look professional. Dress smart, Cover think up. smart. It's yeah. just the way to go. Um, and if you come across something that you don't know, breathe. Take a minute. Ask to reread the the, uh, the question. And generally, I know they say they won't, but the examiner will guide you. We have like a, a weird discharge planning. Thing that, that Pip's absolutely nailed, and I got in there and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And the examiner was like, Why don't you try and ask about this? And I was like, Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And then you kind of, they do take you in the right direction. You know, they want you to pass at the end of the day. So, good luck, everyone. You'll be fine. I know everyone says you'll be fine, and you probably won't think you will be. You will be. You will. If you're here and you're doing the work, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you're going to pass. Okay, we'll see you around. Any other questions? Just, you know. We'll, we'll be here in the front for five minutes if anyone's got a life embarrassing